ready, sir? Yeah. Are you going to say ready, steady, go? Yeah, ready, well, steady, what, what we'll do is we'll wait for this oncoming car to, to disappear just in case you lose control. No. <laughs> not going to happen. Oh, I better not say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch this. Go on, do the ready, steady, go. Ready, steady, go. Oh, it's quite instant. That's unexpected, isn't it? Yeah, here we go. Look at that. Nice. Good, eh? Doesn't stop, does it? No, it just keeps going. <laughs> keep... uh, I'm used to it by now, to, to a lot of it, uh, you know, extent. Well, I was going to say, none of your electric cars are slow, are they, mate? No. No. Does it um, tell me how much power? I mean, uh, uh, when, there's a screen here that's just going up when I'm accelerating, but does, yeah. it, does it tell you how many kilowatts? No, it doesn't. It just has no. a graphical display. It says zero to 100 sort of thing. Yeah. It's a shame. Because that would be nice to see how, how much, much kilowatts we're actually, like, you know, taking out. Yeah. Well, hey guys, and welcome to Petroped. You can see he's asking about the details already. I'm here in Wales with my good mate, Moggy. Oh. Who um, who have given the keys to the Kia press car? Don't worry, Kia put him on the insurance. That was a mistake. Oh, that would be the last time you do that. I know. <laughs> so I'm here to have uh, uh, do a couple of films with Moggy. Sadly, the weather didn't quite play ball today, did it? Well, the clue the clue is in the destination, mate. You've come to Wales. Yeah, I know. So we, we've had to adapt. So I thought we would head back to the workshop and have a look at the simply ridiculous project that Moggy's working on at the moment, and then. We'll come back out and I'll let you know what he thinks of this EV6 GT. Now, as it's chucking it down with rain outside, our filming plans today have changed a little bit. Well, it's Wales, mate. It's, it's Wales. It, what do you expect? It was sunny yesterday. Wait, wait until tomorrow, it'll be snowing. So I thought it'd be really cool to walk around the workshop and just have a look at some of the crazy projects you've got going on. And uh, I went beeline straight to this because... Because it's a crazy project. Yeah, well, you've made some crazy cars since I've known you. Your Beetle's absolutely crazy. Yeah. 600 horsepower in a Beetle. 0 to 16, 2.7 seconds. That's, that's quick. Oh, yeah. Your bus is quick. Yeah. Your Defender's quick. Yeah, you can see, you can see the pattern of uh, yeah. my bills. This, those pale into, they'll be slow, rubbish cars compared with. This is mad. Yeah, this has gone a little bit crazy. You've turned the wick up to like, forget 11. Oh yeah. It's like, you know. Well, the, the thing is though, I, I, I've learned over the years that there is a limit to um, building a road, fast road car before it becomes you know, a, a, a good track car, yeah. that your enjoyment and the road aspect starts to diminish. Yeah. And I did it with a, a previous Beetle years ago. You know, when I put a roll cage in that Beetle, it was more difficult to get into in and out of. The back seat became a bit impractical. And then like, yeah, I did some more modifications to make it really awesome on track. But then the road practicality went down. So I know there's a limit where I stop. You know, when the fun stops, stop, as they say, yeah. with a road car, and you say, nope, that's a road car now. I'm not going into track world with that. And I'm going to build a track car. And that's what this is. So that's where this starts. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so this starts at like, I'm going to build a track car and goes way over into the crazy zone because because uh, it's electric and I can. I mean, it's just a mad thing. So um, it's based on a funk up. Yeah. Chassis. So I, I knew if I'm going to build a track car, yeah. I don't want it because I, initially I was thinking of looking at the Ultima. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, I know the one, yeah. I yeah. looked at the Ultima GTR, That's been a mule or whatever for it was. lots of high end cars, right? Exactly. So I thought, if I take that, that would be really, really quick. Yeah. And okay, it's not practical road car, etc. And I started toying around with the idea yeah. of that and I thought, well, the only thing that put me off that was the fact that it looks quick. Yeah. Well, I like cars that are sleepers, like my bus, for instance. Uh, yeah, looks your bus completely is normal and it's got 450 horsepower in the, in the, uh, in the back end. Yeah. I like sleepers. So I thought, what's a better sleeper than a Beetle? Yeah. Nobody expects a 40 horsepower Beetle to go quick. Yeah. But it does, especially my silver one. So I thought, I'll turn a, tr uh, a track car Beetle into a, an insane monster. So we start off with a Fun Cup, as yeah. you said. So it's a Fun Cup chassis modified yeah and uh fun cups for people that don't know what that is it's an endurance um uh, championship uh, very popular in places like belgium for instance and the uk yeah yeah and it's a single seater normally has an audi engine in the back yeah well so, you've not got an audi engine in the back not got an audi engine in the back anymore 
So I thought, what can we push out of this? Well, first of all, le lesson learned from the Silver Beetle, yeah. I need four-wheel drive. Yes. Because 2.7 uh, not 60 is about the limit of traction for a rear-wheel drive car. Yeah. Four-wheel drive was uh, a definite, Yeah. Um, which posed problems because this car was never meant to be four-wheel drive. No. Uh, and I thought, right, okay, I need a good, powerful Tesla drivetrain to put in it. So I went with um, a Tesla performance setup to start with. Right, and that, I'll put the camera down here while you're chatting. That's so what's in that's here, right? the large Tesla drive unit in the rear and a um, front drive unit, a uh, small drive unit in the front. So we're going to start it off with a performance um, drive train out of a P100D Tesla Model S. Yeah. And I've got it on the, on the shelf somewhere. I've got a Tesla Plaid setup to put in it, if it can cope with it which is where the 1,000 horsepower is coming from. Oh so, my God. But I want to see if this can cope with it So first. the test mule is a P100D? Correct. And we've already made sure that the plant system can fit, so we know that's a, a go anyway. Yeah. But we're just going to see how everything copes with this amount of power, and I think this is something like 800 horsepower, just to see. Oh, only? Yeah, exactly. And then batteries, that I guess that's the battery pack just there. So yeah, so we're planning on a 400 volt system, and that means that the performance motor or the plant system needs to eat a lot of amps when you pl plant your right yeah. foot. So, ra and there's no way you can fit a whole Tesla Model S battery pack in this. It would just be simply too heavy. Yeah. Because I wanted to keep it a thousand horsepower, a thousand kilos. So it's like a one-to-one. -one. Correct. I've always wanted a one-to-one -one car. <laughs> and never could afford to buy one, obviously, but I can build one. So the battery packs are out of a hybrid yeah. Because a hybrid is a great car to get power-dense batteries in. Those are batteries that can cope with a lot of power rather than a lot of range because ah. they're still 400 volts, yeah, but they're yeah. small batteries that has, still has to drive a motor to drive a car. Because yeah. a hybrid that's only driving off the electric motor at any one time, the battery pack needs to be able to be able to support that motor. Yeah. So I've got three hybrid battery packs in parallel. So why in parallel? Because Is that either side of you sat in there? Are they yeah. battery packs? Yeah. Oh, wow. So they're, they're like um, side pods in a, like a single-seater car. Yeah. Um, so the reason why we got them in parallel is it's a little bit like three blokes lifting yeah. up a heavy log. You're sharing the load of yeah. the amps over three packs. And these are already very stiff packs. Yeah. And what I mean by stiff packs is when you plant your foot, the, um, the voltage doesn't sag as the amps is being drawn out. So I've already taken a stiff pack, multiplied it by three, and then put it in here. <laughs> <laughs> and then round the front, so, so not, not content with having a, a whopping great big electric motor on the back axle, you've got one on the front as well. Yeah, so this was the problem um, that we had to overcome quite early on. There's never, there was never supposed to be something there. No. So this was never a four-wheel drive car. So we've had to find a, a space for this. And as you can see, there was a problem with the steering column. You see the steering column used to have a fairly straight shot down to there. Yeah. Now we've had to go over and then like down. So we've got a bevel box in yeah. to be able to go uh, over the front drive unit. And you can push 300 horsepower just out, out of this motor. So um, you know, 300 mm -hmm. horsepower I've, I've been able to theoretically push out of that. 600 horsepower theoretically you can push out of the rear one. So you know, this is enough, but yeah, you know, wow. once you get used to it, it's probably not going to be enough for me. And then suspension setup, is that is that pretty much out funk up or have you been playing with that as well? Because I know I knowing you, yeah. that won't be that won't be standard. No. <laughs> no. So one of the first things we also realise is that the drive shafts um, won't be able to cope with the amount of power and torque that we're putting. You're not gonna it. break drive shafts again, are you mate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never done that, have I? Um, so if you compare the original drive shaft, hang on, let me go and get one. Hang you on. go and get one and I'll do some walk around it here. Look, he's off. Oh, here we go. Look at the size of this one. Oh, right. Wow. So that is an original Fun Cup drive shaft. And that is out of an Audi R8. Oh, wow. So what we've done uh, is we've uprated literally everything from the Tesla motor to the wheel because um, that's the original uh, drive shaft and you can see the difference in thickness to be yeah. able to cope with the power. And then this little CV joint here was what was in the fun cup and we've upgraded that to something even bigger than this now because now we've got Audi RS6 
um, CV joints on, yep. and they're going into Audi R8 um, bearing carriers and hubs. Wow. So it looks like it's um, fairly standard front and cup stuff, but it's not. But it's not. And they're big brakes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I just. You can see the uh, the size difference now. If I if I take that out there, and you compare this CV joint with a big yeah, one that's yeah, in yeah. there, that's a lot lot bigger. Yeah. But then that posed all sorts of other problems with bearing carriers and things like that. So yeah, it's a, it's an amalgamation really of custom drive shaft, um, Audi R8 and Audi RS6 um, stuff. So. Where do you get it from, mate? Where's your mental brain work from? Uh, uh, and, then, and then this is the back. So, yeah, that's the rear clip. So that goes on the rear. Yeah. All fiberglass, obviously. Yeah, and, and this, the... it's going to be a big wang on the back there, I reckon. Yeah, oh, yeah. Big. I'm, <laughs> I'm talking huge! <laughs> oh, my God. Um, but one of the issues with a Beetle, obviously, is there's no radiator normally on the Beetle. Yeah. So we still have to have coolant. So we've got the battery coolant system here. And again, this is all engineering, so like on the fly. We've, uh, we've kind of like taken our experience of other vehicles and thought, okay, this sh should be okay. But if it needs to go bigger, we can actually go up to about here. Yeah. And then the front clip, which is over here. Um, over here. This is the front clip. Um, oh, this, so you've cut a hole in the front. Yeah, we're going to fill these in because this is what a fun cup normally looks like the front anyway because it had an Audi in, engine in, yep. so it had had a big, big radiator. But we're going to fill these in and we're going to cut this all the way to there and then that should hopefully be enough airflow. But if it's not, we can increase the radiator. That is, mate, honestly, you are... But you can see another problem. Oh, we, how now? So, that because you had... This was at Goodwood and you, you didn't have that stuck Correct. on at Goodwood. So, uh, one of the problems we've got is because we've got a lot wider wheels than the original Fun Cup to be able to get the power down, yeah. our wheels come out a lot further, um, which means that we've got to uh, re-sculpt these wings and we're going to get a, a mould made up as well because I will break something. Yeah. I will stack it into a barrier or something at yeah. some point. Because yeah. if I'm not, I'm not trying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to make a mould to make repeatable wings, but that's how much extra we need to come out to be able to cover the, the wheels and on the airflow on the rear we've got a scoop on the top now that scoop let's have a ponder around to get the scoop around the back here that yeah. that's mega it's good isn't it yeah so this used to keep the engine that used to be in the back here all cool yeah and now the airflow from this and the rear um uh, wing ones is going into an air box there and that is the inverter and uh motor radiator for both motors it's just immense so I, I think this is going to be thermally limited rather than um anything else obviously it's going to be grip limited yeah but the main thing that's going to stop me from ragging it is not going to be i'm running out of charge i think things are going to get too hot yeah. so our my initial thoughts are we're going to have to up our game as far as the thermal management is concerned maybe a heat pump um, air conditioning, compressor, etc., just to supercharge the, the coolant system a little bit. And in, yeah. these are the header tanks. So that, that's oh, the battery. That petrol. <laughs> 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 Not for seven years, mate. <laughs> uh, so that's the coolant for the battery and that's the coolant for the uh, motor and inverter. Wow. Wicked. So, do you like the wheels? The wheels are really nice, actually. Yeah, yeah. So where, where are they? Because they're like very Fuchs-like. So these are from Image Wheels uh, in the Midlands. And, uh, you know, we had to get some custom wheels uh, done because, you know, uh, there's no way we could uh, use existing wheels. Yeah. Uh, and these are five stud. Um, the original Fun Cup ones were four. Yeah. Little, like, I think they're four by 100. These are something like five by 110 or 120. I can't yeah. remember now. Uh, but, yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of a, a reimagining of the Fuchs wheel it's if it was a man. modern yeah, like, yeah. Uh, car. So uh, I think they're 10 inch on the back and eight and a half inch on the front. You run it on slicks maybe? Oh yeah, it's, these are just temporary ones to get us going. So we're uh, running the Toyos now just to get it going and bed things in, dial it in, and then we're gonna go to Michelin slicks um, when we're gonna start getting serious. Good right, there you go. So that, <laughs> that's the first part of the war round. I don't know how we beat that. I know. Uh, how about an electric Ferrari? Yeah, all right. 
I'll, I'll, I'll do that then. And, uh, which one? You've got two. Way. Yeah, let's go that way. <laughs> right, now. Ah, look. This is one of the more controversial bills that we've done. Flat 12, oh, Ferrari. What a roar. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got uh, to have a uh, fat balance as well to keep it alive. Yeah. Uh, to service a Ferrari Testarossa engine. It's a lot of money. Yeah, so what's under there? Not, not a Ferrari engine, I'll show you. What do you think is under there? So this, this isn't a Testarossa, is it, mate? It's a Tesla Rossa. Oh, yeah. Yep. Because <laughs> now we've got rid of the flat 12. And ah, actually, it's, a, it's technically, it's a V12 in a flat configuration because a flat 12 is something different. But um, yeah, so that is now Tesla powered. So wow. this is... Sits in there really nicely, doesn't it? Well, you know me, I like to improve a classic car where I can, and people out there are going, what do you mean you improved it? You've taken the heart and soul out. But um, we've improved it because weight distribution wise, this was pretty pants. Yeah. Because it had all the weight in the rear. You had your engine, gearbox, fuel tank, radiators, exhaust, everything was behind you. So weight distribution wise, it was pretty pants. And I used to go into a roundabout and understeer and not a great handling car, if I'm honest. Yeah. But um, what I wanted to do with the electric conversion side of things is improve the handling as well as the performance. So you can see what we've done is the Tesla motor normally sits this side of the drive shaft, yeah. kind of more or less. So we have reversed it over here so that all the weight is in front of the drive shaft. Ah, okay. So we've got the drive unit here. Is that similar to what you do in the Defender? So you've got, have you had to change uh, the gearing in there? Yeah. Uh, no, you don't have to change the gearing, but you do have to um, trick it into running in reverse. Running in reverse, that's it. That's um, so there's a um, performance drive unit in here. Main battery pack is here. Yeah. Um, and there's another um, battery pack. So another battery pack where the fuel tanks are underneath. Uh, just in front of this and another one where the spare wheel uh, is in the front but everything bolts on to the existing infrastructure so this cradle here which yep. holds the tesla motor in place that bolts into the original four points where the engine mounts go and the battery pack does the same it bolts onto the uh, subframe down there and the engine mounts wow. so everything is literally bolted in. even the battery pack that replaces the fuel tanks bolts into the fuel tank mounts right. so not a single hole has been drilled in addition to what's already available to us. So I could, if I wanted to, put the engine back in. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, yeah, wow. it's got CCS charging as well. So most of our bills now have CCS rapid charging. So that's changed a bit because when, uh, in the early days, it was just AC, you, didn't, you hadn't done very many DCs. Yeah, I think a uh, few years ago. Does it make it was... a big difference to the conversion in terms of stuff inside? Is oh, it more difficult? I mean, there's, uh, well, first of all, you need coolant. Yeah. You need to, um, to thermally manage the battery um, well, because if you're putting that amount of amps in, you need to keep on top of the uh, battery temperatures. Yeah. There is some more um, things like contactors that go in, so you need another set of contactors, which are essentially big switches, yeah. um, uh, to um, go in for the CCS system. And then you've got some additional low voltage control systems, so you've got to have a CCS yeah. controller. So it does increase some of the complexity and, but and not you by hide huge that amount. i love that underneath the original oh yeah cap so that that's when it's shut like that so you'd that from is, the outside you just never know no uh and another so thing we've cool. done from yeah. the outside if you were a ferrari you know aficionado yeah the only thing that would give this away that there's something different about it is this panel here because there used to be some big exhausts oh, yeah, here yeah, yeah. and here. Yeah. And what we've done is make, we've made our own little grill that then follows the lines for the other grill here. So from the rear, it all, you know, yeah. blends in. So, but cool. That's what are these the on the floor, thing. dude? Oh, that's kind of what the guys are working on here now. So um, one thing we've done, obviously, to improve the handling of the car is the weight distribution. Yeah. But the other thing is because the weight distribution has changed, there's less weight in the back more yep. weight at the front, which means that we're going to have to change the spring rates and shock, um, uh, shocks anyway. But while we're doing that, um, we got in contact with a company called Race Shocks down in South Wales, and they're an agent for Track Active, who have suspension systems on Pagani Zonda and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, and they said, you know what? You don't want to do that. You want to put a semi-active suspension system on. You're kidding. What's that? I, uh, I asked them. And then when they explained the fact that, you know, monitors the uh, g-forces and you know reacts 
uh, the suspension within like microseconds to improve the handling and yeah. the, the feel. I thought, wow, well, we're making the ultimate Ferrari test rosa. We've got to have the ultimate suspension system. So that's what that is. This is track active suspension by um, the guys down at Race Shocks. Yeah. It's nice. That's what they're doing. Well, it seems you do all this kind of, you know, classic car stuff. I am in a high performance modern day electric car. What are you coming? A Kia EV6 GT, 577 horsepower, right up your street. Say that again, 577 horsepower. All right, you and, have my attention, sir. And Kia have put you on the insurance. Have they? Yeah. <laughs> Does it stop raining yet? No, but that just makes it more emotional. Cool, let's go. Let's do have it. A drive it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> he's even got his own cover because he's got his oily jeans on. Are there any other types of jeans? No, not really, no, not for you. Uh, the one on the left. And then oh, the one yeah. oh on the look, right. there's a screen as well. Yeah, that's that's your blind spot. That's quite a cool. Uh, that's that is a, a good feature. That is a Kia and Hyundai feature. It doesn't until cool. you turn the steering wheel, yeah. the steering wheel gets in the way of it. So you're currently in eco mode, so this is like oh, driving this day's mode. Just mode. hit the GT button on there. The though. big yeah. run here. Yeah, just push that. Oh, yeah, that worked. <laughs> Straight away! Yeah. So now you're in full 577 horsepower, traction's backed off a little bit. Oh, in the wet as well. In the wet as well. Have you got your seatbelt on, Oliver? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good man. I'll wait until we get out of town. Yeah. Because I know these roads quite well. Yeah. No, and I know you've, you've got, got that. I know you've got one well as well. <laughs> uh, is this silly button the GT down here? button, yeah, which is a silly button. So, hey, there we go. So traction control's still on then, yeah? It's off a little bit. Okay, it's not silly instant power. We are a Tesla Model Y driver, so they're they're just as ridiculous. So uh, if you if you bury it, it will it will spin so up. So it just keeps on going. Yeah. So in in my Beetle, for instance, if I floored it then, it would be like that. It's yeah. like it, it, as a graph goes, it's like bang up there. But this is like. Uh, yeah. Like I think they must have to tune that in a little bit so that when normal people get in the car they don't kill themselves. Because right. that, that was my worry with this, is you'll get you're gonna get, you know, a normal family buy this car and it's got nearly six hundred horsepower. That's like supercar that power is a and lot torque. Of power. I can't remember the torque figure, it's like six, seven hundred newton meters, I think. So Kia, right? Mm. Um Kia used to be I'm sorry, Kia out there, but <laughs> Kia used to be rubbish. Yeah. Didn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, even Kia will admit that and Kia weren't great. All of a sudden, as soon as Electric came out, they thought, oh, here's our chance to be cool, guys. Yeah. Let's get some really cool design cars, put loads of power in, and turn Kia cool. Yeah. And they I think they changed the logo as well to like a They have got that, that's the new logo. KN yeah. or something. That's yeah. it, yeah. 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 So as soon as they did that, all of a sudden electric was their you know opportunity to go cool. Yeah. And all their cars since they've gone electric are like, hang on a minute, where did yeah. Kia come from? Nero, brilliant, Soul, yeah. brilliant, this, brilliant. And then this yeah. is like I think a better looking car than say that Jaguar I pace. And yeah. say I think it looks like a more aggressive or angry looking Jaguar I pace. Yeah. But and then he put a silly amount of power in, yeah. which is okay with me. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to have a 600 horsepower kit, but well, it's good. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah. you do. Oh, no, you don't need to, but you have to. But you have to. I, th so the reason I wanted to come up here with this car, because I thought this was a very you kind of car. Yeah. We take a, a normal, sedate family Kia and then whack 600 horsepower in it. Yeah. A bit like you taking a normal, sedate Beetle. I'm whacking 600. Who would do such a thing? I don't know. You who are the only person I know who would do such a thing. 